I'm Alan Davis, and this is As Yet Untitled. This is the show where me and four funny people sit down and have a conversation, and during the course of the conversation, we will come up with a title for the show. We have limited ambition, but so far, we've always achieved our goals. Uh, please, will you welcome my guests? Okay, I'm going to introduce them all one at a time. <laughs> Please really welcome Grace Dent. Grace Dent hasn't been to yoga in 18 months. Grace Dent. <laughs> David O'Doherty is here. David O'Doherty is an almost professional athlete and has had a top 30 hit. David O'Doherty is here. Johnny Vegas. Welcome, Johnny. Johnny became an inadvertent subscriber to the Catholic newsletter. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny Vegas. And Sean Kelly. Sean Kelly shouldn't go camping with co-workers and will never again live in a van. That's right. That's it. Only one. <laughs> I shall explain. And now, in what field were you almost a professional athlete? Well... You could say in numerous fields, uh, in that I wanted to be... It's looking increasingly unlikely that it's going to happen by the year <laughs> now. But the closest I ever got was... In, in the year 2000, I just started doing stand-up comedy, and I was house-sitting for Arlo Hanlon, a very funny comedian, and he plays golf, and he had been booked to play in the Pro-Am of the Irish Open, which is the day before the pro tournament starts, the players, to get used to the course, play with, I think, probably businessmen and then also some people like Ardle. And he got stuck in London and they were just searching for someone at the last minute. Could somebody please fill in? So I said I would play. And it was with the defending champion, a Swedish guy who, who went on to be quite successful, called Patrick Scholand, won it the year before. And so I was drawn to play with him. And when I arrived there, I didn't have any golf clubs or any golf gear. So the first thing the sponsors did was gave me full pro gear and uh, clubs and a caddy. And so I looked like the defending champion. Okay? And on the first tee, there are about 1,500 people. And uh, all people are saying is the defending champion's about to hit his first shot at the tournament. And uh, I get up. And I hit the single greatest golf shot I've ever hit. I absolutely tonked it down the middle of the hole. And uh, he hit his shot fine. But in the five minutes it takes to get to the ball, I've actually convinced myself, holy shit, I can do this. <laughs> if you just imagine you're a pro... It turns out that's all you have to do. <laughs> and then when I get to the ball, I'd say 150 people have formed quite a tight horseshoe around it. And that's when the nerves really start to set in. Because at least on the tee, they're all in the grandstand. Whereas I could kill <laughs> upwards of 30 people here with this wayward shot. And so I do that. I hit it about two yards and then I hit it about four yards <laughs> and yes. there follows four hours of me hitting the ball, you know, 10 to 15 yards each time. But for that glorious five minute spell, I mean, I think it was so embarrassing, the rest of it, because every single time there's a new lot of people in each hole would go, oh, the defending champ is here. Let's see what he's like. And then because I, I, I guess it's one of my dreams, kids would run up with programs and they'd be like, can you sign this defending champ? And I would just jot down a... Hardlo Hanlon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and would hit... And I, I gained a real uh, appreciation for how hard it must be to be... Like, imagine you're in a boy band. The two kind of bouncer dudes on either side, the talentless ones... That's effectively what I was. I was pretend. I, it seemed like I could do it, but deep down in my heart, I knew I am an absolute phony here, and that is the closest I ever got to. <laughs> Went to school with a lead singer. The <laughs> and yeah, probably once took a punch for him or something that involved me getting at it. But that's the closest my uh, pro golf career um, ever got. 
That's what take right. that's a bit like now, though, isn't it? There's only three yeah, of them no, left now. Well, it's like the worst ones, isn't it? The worst ones are left. Mm. I have a lot of respect for people who just leave at the... Like, John Deacon was the bass player in Queen. And yeah. I think after Freddie died, he just went, right, I'm out, I'm done. We had, a, we had a great band, and that's it. Whereas the others keep appearing at the top of Buckingham Palace. I or, love him, though. <laughs> Brian. Do you love Brian? Oh, I love him because he's... he's great, I just love him. I love how passionate he is about patches. He's really good at the guitar, isn't he? <laughs> no, I don't care about that. Is it's, the, badgers? it's the badgers like... and the foxes and stuff. I'm a big animal. Is he lover. into badgers? Do you have badgers in America? I'm sure we do. <laughs> in this, in this, we're killing the Seems badgers like we have over everything here. Else, yeah. We're killing them off because they're, what is it? They're, they're, oh, apparently they've got TB. They, they've, they've got TB and they're passing it on. So mm. we're culling them. People are against they've it. Just had a very bad, Grace is against they've it. had a very bad PR campaign in this country. Badgers. Um, I mean, Me and Brian agree on this. You Brian. just very rarely hear a good news story about badgers. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you never hear I was hit by a truck in the middle of nowhere. And next of all, five badgers took me to A and E. With a little pause. <laughs> yeah. 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 They they do do need chunk that. man. Yeah. You know the film Honky Tonk Man? I feel a non sequitur yeah. coming up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I just... Did he ever, at any point in that movie, bump into a badger? <laughs> what, what, what happens in that one? <laughs> He's made up a film that doesn't exist. <laughs> Honky Tonk Man is a genuine film about a singer who gets TP and at no point in that movie is there a black and white flash in the background and then going, right, I feel like off coming up. You're, you know about culture and stuff. Is that a real thing? No. The um Honky <laughs> <laughs> Tonk Man's a genuine film. It was my sole purpose here for is, is this an intervention? <laughs> yeah. Honky yeah. okay, Tonk Man's a really good When he makes something up, pin him down on it. <laughs> the, um, Don't just I laugh and let him go. To, please keep this in. Has Turn anybody us. heard of it? Has anyone is it a dream? Really heard of it was a dream. <laughs> <laughs> How would Clint do tuberculosis, for goodness sake? You know what? Jesus Christ, this is how the Nazis started. Just an idea on the... T <laughs> <laughs> it's a really this good film This is not film how the Nazis the started. <laughs> <laughs> exactly like this. <laughs> Honky Tonk Man, it's a... <laughs> Don't keep saying it, because we've heard you the first time. <laughs> it's a genuine film. I expect a text from you tomorrow, <laughs> from all of you, in fact, just going, I'm sorry, I got home, I looked it up, it's a really good film. I believe and you. It, and it was very sad at the end, he coughs up blood. It was it's a beautiful I film. I don't think it was probably released here. <laughs> the, um, the... <laughs> <laughs> it was. I don't want to start a beef with Brian May, mm. uh, and that's a sentence I've never said before, but <laughs> the badger is Ireland's most dangerous wild animal in terms of attacks... I am listening, I'm just looking oh, yeah. at Honky Tonk Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come off it. You would have to go out of your way to find the badger and then poke it with something. OK, this is what I've heard. There's a time of year when the badger mates. And uh, during that time, if you walk onto their turf, then they will come... Turf. Yeah, yeah uh, they will... <laughs> <laughs> The <laughs> literally the badger badgers in Harlem. The <laughs> <laughs> that was a good film. <laughs> <laughs> now that one I saw. Uh, yeah, that was good. Cool. So the, it was brilliant in that. The badger <laughs> has a lock jaw. So if you're you're walking through the woods and the uh, so the badger oh 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 this could be a a, 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 a mate rival. So the badger comes and attacks you because it thinks you're going to shag the other badger. Here's, here's what happens, Grace. It's a sexually aggressive badger. Locks on your leg, OK? And I'm sure other people have heard this, that you have to carry... Never heard of it, about it before in my life, mate. <laughs> Should have backed me up on the fucking film. Did you find this? <laughs> Did you find this? Should have... I've seen badgers, they never locked on me. I never smelt like a... <laughs> So you smell me like a competitor. <laughs> you, the badger will only release when it hears the the crack of bone. So you have to carry a stick, and then if the badger is if that the, a real thing? Yeah, this is well. This only is only when your bone cracks will it let you go. Look, I either heard this We're somewhere. About that bit. 
big. Yeah, they can't do that. No, no they're, they're huge. Not. They're huge. <laughs> <laughs> they either heard this somewhere. Or dreamt it. Or One dreamt it. <laughs> okay. Would you, like me to, would you like me to put you out of your misery? And the director has come, in, has come into my ear and said, Honky Top Man was released in 1982, starring Clint Eastwood. Oh. Oh, right. <laughs> and it, he told me that about five minutes ago, but it was much more fun. <laughs> the bit, the, period, of, the period of time when you were going, is there nobody here? <laughs> was more fun. Carrying a stick. Carry on about the badger. So, badger. So you're born has to break. See, so, now, I'm in, now I'm intrigued. So, badger. <laughs> Badger only releases upon hearing the crack of bone. So you wow. carry the stick, and then if the if the badger uh, grabs you, you get the stick and you crack it over your other knee. Why don't you I crack it over the badger's head? <laughs> <laughs> the badger hears, thinks it's broken your leg, and returns to its. Base. So it's satisfied once it's broken your leg, it would just walk away from you. <laughs> it's just I'm, I'm imagining you stamp the, on the, it, the you? badger would think, I've killed my competitor, not good, his leg's broke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go into the forest with an erection, wait for the badger to attack. <laughs> I'm going to let it break my leg, and then I'm going to pick it up and shake it and go, you didn't think this through. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to shake it, looking at my penis and go, and I'm going to go into your home, and I'm going to make love to your wife, and I'm going to befriend your kids, <laughs> and I'm going to do loads of work for nature. <laughs> Whereas you are going on the train line, my friend. <laughs> you can watch the rest of this episode on UK TV Play. And now for some extra stories that didn't make the show. Can you talk us through a couple of your driving tests? Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, uh, over what period of time are we talking about seven failures? It was over about six or seven years. Have you ever passed it? No. 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 <laughs> and, no. Grace, how early in the test do you realise oh, you definitely right failed? <laughs> <laughs> right at the test centre, oops. Right away. I've, um... <laughs> I've, uh, well, one of them, I had the inspector of the inspector inspecting him. Oh, it's sitting in the back? Yeah, sitting in the oh, back. Would put you off. And when I, I was driving and I realised that they'd both ducked down at the same time. <laughs> so I knew I'd not got that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's embarrassing. And then the Daily Mirror in about 2003, because I was working for them at the time, they got the best British School of, School of Motoring instructor and they sent me on a residential course for one week and I totally fucked. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I passed. I used the two tricks to pass as well. Babysit in the back. Don't have a kid. Creates yeah. the impression I need the test for to drive little and to school. Um, and also wearing like a civil service, like a Department of the Environment tie, as if to imply, tester, we are one here. <laughs> and I really need this to get little and here <laughs> to school so you're I've gonna turn tried me to all that kind of stuff though because people said to me after the fourth one when you need to use your sexuality and i went as a feminist i find that disgusting and then i was like fuck it and then i, I went <laughs> i literally turned up almost looking like shirt sure, on the turnbook time video you know? and, then, and then it didn't work did you because I was too sexy. Yeah. <laughs> no. Did you take the theory test? Did you have to do the theory test? You see, I didn't at first, but then um, it to. moved to a point in history where I did, because <laughs> it went on for so long. The theory is really hard. I, yeah, my driving instructor failed. Um, you know the part of the theory. Imagine teaching him. <laughs> Just suddenly stop one, one person jacked in after one day and another guy to calm it. Right, that's only because of uh, <laughs> junctions and hazards. <laughs> when I tried to learn when I was 17, he did, he actually went, you know what, well, you've no fear of the road. That, that was his only positive. But no, I, I went for the TV. The, the one, um, Hazards Awareness, where you have to watch a video screen and click. Yeah. I was watching a Hazards Awareness video, and it was a couple crossing. And the bloke crossing looked like my dad, right? <laughs> with a much younger woman. And I just <laughs> clicked my accident. You know, it was a genuine. And the rest of my theory test, when I turned up, the bloke was going, oh, so you're doing a bit of acting now. I've done a bit of acting to myself in the past. I've done that. And he was after some extra work. And he kept walking around me when I was doing the test and going, 
I'm trying to give me the answers. And all the other big ones are going to toss me going, wanker. <laughs> As if I was going to offer him a leading role in something. You only got I'm not in a position to cast you now. Fuck off. <laughs> David, didn't yeah. I read somewhere that you used to be a telemarketer? Yeah, I did. So I... you were one of these evil gas people? Well, I mean, <laughs> no. I, I, I did a real, the real. I wanted to be a jazz musician. I wanted to play the piano. My dad's a piano player. And in the period. That's just... a way of covering up what you did as an evil. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Telephone. <laughs> I wanted, to be. I wanted to play the piano, but I turned out being Satan instead. <laughs> well, you mean you wanted to be a potter? That was pottery was my was was my jazz. Jazz was my pottery, and uh, <laughs> the, that was the name of my first album. <laughs> That's the name of this show. <laughs> this show is called Pottery Is My Jazz. And, and watch the viewing figures slump. <laughs> Two things that nobody likes. Now this show's going to be called Evil Gas People. That's right. <laughs> The, so I did, um, yeah, so I did telemarketing for a while, which was, that's telemarketing, though, where you, you phone up cold, strangers cold and ask them to rate things out of 10. Uh, so <laughs> cling film was things that you've never thought about. You realise... you slip in some of your own in the middle of the ones you have to do? <laughs> the, oh, well, absolutely. You ring, well, you, you, you need to get another 10 people who are female between the ages of 20 and 30 and before you can clock out, so you just start to ring your friends then, and uh, go yes. You, I know. I remember the whole spiel. Um, hello, this is David Ardy calling from Lazar Market Research. We're conducting a survey today into consumer uh, habits. Tell me, do you use cling film? So you don't. You don't give them a chance to say get lost, and they go yeah. And then, how would you rate your cling film? And it, like, that's something that no one's ever thought about. You know, I once had a, a telemarketer like that, and I don't normally give them time, but I gave this one time, and halfway through, I realised they were having a wank. Oh come <laughs> on! <laughs> Swear to God, really? It was a tell? pervert because I could do a heavy breathing. This was back in the old days. Could have just had asthma. This is back in the. <laughs> this is back in the old days before the internet. <laughs> before the internet, where you got your good old-fashioned pervert that rang you. How does it tell me about your undies? This is it. I then knew because he started asking me if I'd ever been. It moved on to had I ever been under anaesthetic. Then he went, oh, how does it feel? And I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Well, that's a good Wasn't line. that you? <laughs> God, no. Wow. I know this would not have given me the horn. Yeah. <laughs> asking, asking people about cling film could be the world's number one boner shrinker. <laughs> of all. Yeah, the, 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 Did anyone get really outraged going, it's rubbish? Yeah. You know, the, like kind of... It, in the microwave, it cleans my food, doesn't have food to breathe. No, but it's when you, when you tear it and then it goes back onto the roll and you can't get it off the roll. That's it! You can't find the start! <laughs> <laughs>